All right, guys, so now that we're at home, uh, it's been a couple weeks since I shot those other videos. Uh, sorry, I haven't got this one out to you. But now that we're at home, I want to go ahead and go over the things that you can do with these logs uh, once you get them off your Android device. So once you transfer the tablets over, uh, you'll get something like this. And it doesn't look like this. I went ahead and formatted this so that way you, it's a little bit easier to read, a little bit easier to see, a little bit easier to follow. And I also added some additional columns we'll talk about here soon. Uh, so these are not, uh, these are not uh, part of the uh, MHD software. I actually did these via calculations um, because it, it, uh, basically the software reads at Newton meters, as does the uh, DME, I believe. So I'm going to go ahead and Americanize that, turn that into pound feet, got that. Um, uh, or foot pounds rather, uh, no pound feet's good. Um, so anyway, um, want to go ahead and see, should go over this. So this is what it spits out. So I'm going to go over a couple different data points so you guys can see. Um, but uh, accelerator pedal position, that's pretty self-explanatory. You can see here all the way throughout the log, you can see where it's basically full throttle, no throttle, part throttle, etc. That's important. You'll see your boost here. So this is what the boost that the T-MAP sensor is reading um, on the manifold, I believe, or it's on the charge pipe, one of the two. So this is the this is what the car this is the actual boost the car is seeing. Um, so you'll be able to go here through here, see what max boost you hit, etc. It looks like I saw 17.9. Um, yeah, it looks like 17.9 is about what I saw on this one. And then you'll also see the boost target. So the boost target is what you're going to be able to. Uh, what's basically what the computer is telling the car to do. And then the boost. This this is what the this is what the computer is telling the car to do, and then this is what the car is actually doing. So this is a really nice tool for diagnostics. So if you want to see, like, if you're having some 30 FF codes or you're seeing some other stuff, go to your log, look at this. This will help you kind of figure out what's going on based on when it's going on and all this other stuff. Basically, what when things are going, what, when things are happening. So uh, if your if your target boost is supposed to say 20 and it's only hitting 13, then it's a problem. These are pretty much within the noise 17.1. Uh, so there's going to be, and I'll go ahead and graph this for you because there's going to be some. Um, what do you call it? There's going to be some discrepancies, right? So um, let me go over here, go to um, <clears throat> uh, insert, rather. I'm going to go over here to insert. I want to insert a, it's basically a scatter plot. So we'll do this. Uh, well, never mind. We're going to go ahead and delete that because that's not what we were trying to do. Um, so I want to take this, this, this column and this column, and I want to make a scatter plot so I can. All right, let's do a line graph and rather instead. So I'm going to delete this. This is just for uh, so that way you can see. So here you can, so like I said, you can see here, um, I'm pointing at the screen instead of using my pointer. Um, you can see here, so the boost target here, you, you see the discrepancy here uh, with the with the boost that the, the computer is telling it to do and then what's actually happening. So this is this can be attributed to a couple different things. Well, first of all, it's turbo lag. So uh, despite the turbos being itty bitty and spooling instantaneously, I think this is a little easier to see. Um, and spooling instant, uh, what, what feels like instantaneously, they're still not doing it instantaneously. You can see that there's still a discrepancy here. And the other discrepancy is I'm using the factory charge pipe with the factory diverter valves. The factory diverter valves are designed for eight pounds of boost, not 18 pounds of boost. So um, they, there's, it's not uncommon for them to be leaking a little bit of pressure. The charge pipe is also uh, a little bit flimsy on the bottom side, so it's not uncommon for that to be expanding a little bit. So there's a bunch of different little details here, but mostly, you know, you got your lag here. So the, the actual boost takes a second to actually ramp up to the desired boost level that the DME is asking for. So you can see here, uh, once it does get up there though, it's within the noise, right? You got, you got, uh, you basically got the boost that it's asking for throughout. And this is what is going to be normal. So if you, after this little, um, lag or whatever it is, um, if you see that your car, there's a big difference between the two after, um, and, it, and the, say your, your uh, boost actually evens out and your target boost is still up here, something's going on. Your car is not able to uh, make the boost that it is asking for. So you need to go ahead and investigate that, see what's going on. Um, so I'm going to delete this. So that is a nice uh, feature. Uh, your coolant temperature is here. So I'm using the sport cooling right now. Uh, I believe it's supposed to stay around 200 degrees, which it does, uh, you know, from 196, 194 to 203, so nine degree fluctuation in this run. Uh, uh, so this is nice to keep if you're having uh, overheating issues or anything like that. Um, you know, definitely check out your coolant temperature. That's important. Timing correction. So these are really important as well. So uh, so these are cylinder one, two, three, four, five, and six. Um, 
these are what you're going to look at for uh, uh, basically the, the DME taking timing back because it's seeing uh, IETs that are too hot or it's seeing uh, detonation or knock. So it's going to go ahead and pull the timing back. And you can look at each individual cylinder and see what it's doing. So here at cylinder five, you can see right here, it's taking two degrees, uh, 2.7 degrees of timing out. Here it's taking almost five degrees. Oh, it did take five degrees out here. Um, so this is good to go look through and see like what's going on. Why would it be pulling timing? Uh, you know, check your mixture, check your uh, IATs, et cetera. Um, definitely go through those things. I'm going to go ahead and delete these since we're done looking at them, kind of keep things rolling. I guess before I do that, I'll probably save this for the formatting. Yeah. So, um, yeah, so I'll go ahead and delete these now just for you know presentation purposes. God dang it. Forgive me. Okay. Um, so here you have your low pressure fuel sensor. So when you're running E85, it's really important to keep an eye on this because this is where you're kind of going to run into your limitations. So with the N54, it's, the fueling is really your limit, uh, your, your limiting factor. You can throw 30 pounds of boost on the stock motor, but if you don't have the fueling, it's not going to happen. Um, the motor will take it. Uh, you can get the upgraded turbos to take it, all this other stuff, but your fueling is what matters. So right now I'm running 100% stock fuel system, and this is what my fuel, this is what my fuel pressure is with the E40 mix that I prescribed earlier in the video. So 55.7. So that is, um, and also you want to look through this, make sure you don't see any fluctuations. Um, and there's not any. I mean, it's 55.7 through the whole log, which is what you want. So you want to go ahead and look through that. Um, basically, from what I've heard, uh, so I've heard two different things. So below 50 is definitely a no-go. Below 50 is not what you want to do. Uh, if you're below 50 PSI, you need to check the health of your fuel pump or you're running too much E85. Um, I've also heard below 55. So um, I'm above both, so I'm not really worried about it. Uh, upgraded fuel pump is coming, which we should put us back in the 70 PSI range. Um, which is, like I said, this is critical when you're running E85, this is what you need to look at. Because basically what happens is your, is your high pressure fuel pump is, is driven off the motor of accessory drive. If you do not have enough low pressure, enough low pressure uh, from your low pressure fuel pump, what's going to happen is in the lower RPMs where your high pressure fuel pump isn't spinning that high, you're going to get some hesitation because the low pressure fuel pump isn't doing its job. On the higher RPMs, the, the high pressure pump can kind of make up for that a little bit uh, because it's it's now it's being driven, so now it can kind of pick up the slack from the low pressure fuel pump, but your low RPM performance is going to suffer and it's not good for the car. You can run lean mixtures, um, but and also, um, you're for especially for bigger turbo cars. If your low pressure fuel, I'm sorry, for stock turbo cars, if your low pressure uh, fuel uh, pump isn't doing its job, then you're going to lose all that low end power that the stock turbos are designed to make. So you want to make sure you're using that in an efficiency zone. Gear kind of makes self-explanatory. IETs, those are important. Okay, so IETs, you basically want to stay, from what I understand, plus or minus 20 degrees of ambient. So this was an 85 degree day. I'm running um, a really aggressive tune here. This is the uh, E40 uh, tune on the V7 MHD, which is, uh, they do recommend an intercooler, and here's why. So this is 85 degree day, and already my run is starting off of 20 degrees above ambient. Already, I haven't even hit the gas, and my IATs are through the roof. Um, so once you get through the run, look how fast stuff starts getting real here so i mean you start hitting 102 104 111 so it starts jumping sporadically 111 113 117 126 140 156 165 guys this is too hot 172 176 okay so we're in houston that's a mild day 85 degrees is not going to happen during the summer you're going to be in the 90s almost all summer so this is why it's going to be a critical path for me personally to get an intercooler so we're going to go shopping for intercooler soon. But yeah, that's way too hot, guys. That's when you're going to see your timing corrections. That's when you're going to see the computer dial back boost. That's when you're going to see uh, a lot of performance lost uh, due to ambient or your IATs being too damn hot. Um, when they're too hot, you're not going to make the power you want. So <clears throat> next thing for me, intercooler charge pipe. Um, moving on to um, AFR, so these are, this is a nice thing to take a look at. For me, they are on point, guys. These AFRs are perfect. You want basically a 14.7 stoichiometric ratio of air to fuel, um, and 
we base it's basically hitting it. Well, E85 is a little different, but since the since the um, DME and the O2 sensors are just programmed to read um, AFRs like this, this is it's 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 right basically you want to see 14.7 you want to see about 12 on wide open throttle uh, that's a good safe zone it kind of gets out of hand here this is when you let go of the throttle the afrs go crazy but uh but yeah you want to see around 12 full throttle and you want to see about 14.7 maintaining stuff oil temps another big deal on the n54 we're going to talk about that a little bit later uh, because we're going to get a little trick that might help this out uh, 225 is okay 230 is okay it's still a little hot for my taste um, but nothing out of the ordinary here um, from what BMW designed the car to. This is your rail pressure. This is your high pressure. So you can see the high pressure gets real, guys, at 2,000 plus PSI. Um, that's, that's how it's able to make up the slack on the low, for the low pressure fuel system if it's not doing its job because it, it, it runs at such a high rail pressure. So uh, make sure these, these are something you want to see check often as well, especially if you're having fueling issues, if you're having lean issues, uh, check your high pressure fuel pump. BMW extended the warranty for 10 years and uh, 120,000 miles, something like that. So if you're having high pressure fuel problems, uh, take it into the BMW. Here's your RPM, self-explanatory speed, self-explanatory short-term fuel trims. Um, I don't really, I didn't really uh, read up enough about these to talk to you guys about them intelligently. So we're going to go ahead and delete those for now. Uh, throttle position. Um, this is a um, kind of let you know what's going on with their obviously throttle position. Here's your total. Here's your total timing here. If you want to take a look at your total timing, here it is. Um, you can see the computer adjustments. So this run is actually in the. Um, um, at first you get a little timing, get that low end torque, and then it's going to retard the timing a little bit. And uh, the computer is also taking a uh, torque value. So you're actually, it's actually getting a torque value in Newton meters, which I'll show you later for us Americans. Uh, it's been uh, change it over to something that we understand a little bit better. Trans temp, you basically want to keep those below 230, 220 from what I'm understanding, maybe even less than that. Uh, this is your wastegate duty cycle, guys. So this is really showing you the, how hard your turbos are working. How hard are they? Um, how hard are they being pushed? About fifty percent, um, and then ninety-seven percent. That's a lot. Um, Thirty thirty-nine percent uh, going throughout. Fifty percent. So basically, you want to see this go down. You want your turbos to work easier. Get some downpipes. Get some inlets. Get some. Uh, get a cold air intake. You basically want to. You want to remove all the restrictions for the turbos possible. That way, it's not working as hard. Turbo's not working as hard. It's going to last longer. It's going to uh, produce less temperature, etc., etc., etc. So um, here's the actual torque values of my car uh, converted over to foot pounds. Uh, very easy um, conversion. Um, you can see throughout here a ton of torque the N54 is pushing out. Um, and last but not least, I went ahead and calculated horsepower as well. Um, I don't find it to be that accurate, which we'll see here in a minute. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and show you guys the virtual dyno here while I'm at it. Um, so if you want to see like kind of like a rough idea what your car is making to the tires, etc., go ahead, uh, download this software, Virtual Dyno. You're going to go over here to uh, File. You're going to load your runs. I'm going to go ahead and do these because, wait, I'll go back. I'll do my um, 7.1 runs, my, one of my latest ones. Let's see. Let's do this one. You're going to go ahead, run, load your runs. You're going to put the car in. If it's not in, you're going to have to answer a lot of questions. Um, so I have the 535i uh, Sport Auto, and I want to do SAE corrections, and I want to do uh, my occupancy weight is 235. I need to get that down. Uh, say it's a fourth gear pull. So let's see what happens. So this is a basically what you're going to see on the dyno. So uh, these numbers not impressive to me, but let's go ahead and load some more runs. So let's we got that one. Uh, let's do this one. We'll do the same thing, SAE, BMW, 535i, Sport Auto, 235. Let's do SAE corrections. Ooh, these are not right. And do 85 degrees this day, 85 degrees. And um, gear four, I believe. So when you get crazy numbers like this, this is obviously a third gear pool. So you want to go ahead and make sure the gear is correctly is on there correctly. And so what you're going to okay. So basically, what I want to talk about here, guys, is that this is just a tool, right? So this isn't this may or may not be accurate. It should be pretty damn accurate based on the uh, all the data that the dyno uses, uh, the log data, 
um, I'll just show you what happens when you go to put in a car. You need to know the all the gear ratios, you know if it's a manual or automatic, you need to know the weight, you need to know the drag coefficient, the frontal area, tire diameter, etc, etc, etc. You also need to have your mile per hour on whenever you're doing your logs and you should get something like this. So this is about what the car will be making at the rear wheels. Um, I'm, uh, that should be about right. I would be expecting closer to 400 wheel, but since my IATs were in the 170, 160 degree range, uh, probably not going to happen. It's too damn hot. So um, another thing that this is useful for is, um, sorry guys, I need to, I'll have to show you guys later what I was talking about. But another thing it's useful for is graphing, but if you got your stuff in Excel, it's easy to graph. So uh, hopefully, guys, that gives you a good idea of kind of what's going on. I know this is a longer video, but this is for the tech guys that are interested. Definitely take a look if you're interested in this kind of stuff. Go over all these things. Look at your logs, et cetera, et cetera. And, guys, this is what's really nice about the N54 platform. There's so much, like, techy, geeky stuff you can do. And if you're not into it, drop it off with a tuner. Let him do the logs. Let him do everything and, and drive the car when he's done. Um, but this is really cool, especially for guys like me in school for engineering, want to see all this stuff, want to go ahead and see how your car is doing. You can log it at any time. You can load any tune you want anytime. It's really nice. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Sorry it's been a long one, but uh, thank you guys for uh, checking in, and we will have some more content soon uh, regarding what we're doing next with the BMW. So take care, guys.